Hey, I'm Gaur and welcome back to the beginner's guide on DCTIL development. So last time you hopefully made your very first DCTIL, which was a lift gamma gain and offset tool. But the main problem with it is that you can't really change how much of each is being applied during use. So in this video, we will tackle first on adding those custom UI parameters. So you can change how much of each is being applied during use. And secondly, we'll look at what functions are. So we left off at having these variables that we can only change inside of the code, which isn't very practical. Now to add UI parameters that you can change inside of Resolve, we have to go and find some snippets of code. And we'll find these in the readme file that comes with DaVinci Resolve. To find this file, let's head over to help, documentation, and developer. This opens a folder where you'll find DaVinci CTL, or well, DCTL. And inside of here, you have some example DCTLs and the readme file. I'll open this with VS Code. To make it easier to read, I'll also change this to highlight as C sharp, but in this case, I don't want all TXT files to be C sharp. So I'll just head over to the bottom right, hit plain text and choose C sharp. And what this file has is a lot of info about DCTLs, including what we're interested in, the different UI parameter types, which are covered from line 185. Here we can see that we have five different types of UI elements, those being a float slider, integer slider, value box, checkbox, and combo box. And here's the code to define all of them. In this case, we only need the float slider. So let's copy the code for that one and paste it at the very top of our DCTL. These UI parameter definitions always have to be outside of any function, but they don't necessarily have to be at the very top. And because we have four different variables, I'll paste it four times. Now, you can also think of these as functions. They have the function name, parentheses, and different parameters. The first one is the variable name. This is a variable that will be created automatically, which you can use later on in your code to reference the value of this slider. I like to use the convention of P underscore, as in parameter, and then type a name such as lift. But you can name it whatever you like. I'll do this for the others as well, naming them gamma, gain, and offset. Then we have the label. This is what will be shown inside of Resolve. So we can also name these lift, gamma gain and offset. Then first the type, which in this case will leave at float. Then the default value, minimum value, maximum value and step. For the default value, I will have the same ones we had before. So lift and gamma will be zero and have 0.0f. Zero zero as should be, gain will be at 1.0, because what gain is, is just multiplying the image by gain. So multiplying the original signal by one will equal the original signal. And finally, we have offset, which will default also to zero. Then we have the minimum value. You can try different values, but I'll have lift as minus one and the maximum value of one. And the step, well, it should change the step of the variable. So if you would have it at 0.1, you wouldn't be supposed to have finer control than 0.1. I haven't found this to work. So I will just set all of these to some arbitrary number. And what I just did here is select all the occurrences of this selection. And I did this by hitting control or command and D multiple times and I'll do 0.001F, but this doesn't really matter. Then for gamma, I think I'll have the same values, so I'll just copy and paste them. For gain, I'll have the minimum at zero and the maximum at two. And for offset, we can have minus one and one. And now that we have defined these custom UI parameters, we can use these variables inside our code. So I'll copy plift, and replace 
both occurrences inside of the code. Again, using Control or Command D. I'll take gamma and find all three gammas. Gain and replace gain and offset with offset. And because we don't need these anymore, I'll delete them. So now in theory, if I save and head over to DaVinci Resolve and hit reload, we have our first UI parameters. And if all has gone well, they also work, kind of. As you can see, setting lift to a negative value seems to break the image very quickly. But gamma seems to be working well, as is the case with gain, as is the case with offset. Very nice. So now with lift, this is a case where the code itself works. It just isn't doing what we hoped it would. Let's first compare it to what the built-in lift would do. Definitely not breaking the image like that. So let's head over to our code and see how our lift is working. So to understand what exactly is working, we might want to head over to Fusion because on the color page, you can't really see the precise values of the pixels. And in this case, we're not sure if the white we're seeing is actually white pixels or if it's some kind of an artifact. Mm -hmm. So let's head over to Fusion with Control or Command Space or Shift Space, I think on Mac. We can create a DCTL here, choose our DCTL, set the default values as they should and try to lift here. And it seems to work. And seemingly it works. But if we hover over the black pixels, what we'll see at the bottom here, what we'll see on the bottom left is color RGB NAN, meaning not a number. This means that something has gone wrong, where on normal pixels we would see the float values. So indeed, something has gone wrong in our calculations. And what we actually have happening here is an interesting quirk of the power f function, which is that unlike how it should work in theory, in mathematics, this function does not like negative numbers as its input. As such, it's best to do it first. So I'll move this line down underneath using Alt or Option and the down arrow. And if I save and head over to DaVinci Resolve, hit reload, and now suddenly lift is working as expected. We also of course have gamma, gain and offset working beautifully. And the next thing we can do is turn all of these into functions. Even though they are very simple in this case and don't take up much room, it's good to practice with. So let's create our very first custom function. As said before, every function has to start with this. Then we can set what the function outputs. And in this case, let's first create functions that apply lift, gamma, gain and offset to floats. So let's output floats, call it apply lift, brackets, have parentheses and brackets and open them. And for the parameters, we'll want to have a float in and a float lift. So we take in the input value, the amount of lift we want to apply, and we'll output a float. And inside the function, we can copy this code, which applies lift, indent it using tab, add a semicolon at the end and return it. Now, as we have different variables inside of this function, we don't want to apply to the out and using p lift, but we want to apply to in using the lift variable. And in theory, this is our first function done. We can try it out by replacing what we have here with that function, but do keep in mind that while this works on the float free, we want to apply lift function to the individual channels. So let's do apply lift, apply it only to one channel at a time, and take p lift as the parameter and pass it on. Now let's copy this two times and change these to apply for each channel. Save this DCTL, open up, reload, and if everything has gone well, 
it still works exactly the same. And the next step to make it even more compact inside of our main function, we could create another function, which this time returns a float free and takes in a float free. Let's call it apply lift f3, for example, have it take in a float free in and a float lift and output the float free. And instead of using this equation directly inside of our new function, let's use the other function inside of here. So we can create an out variable that will start doing stuff on, make it equal to in, and then apply float to each of the channels as we did in our main function before. Copy it two times, change it to the y and z variables, and finally return the out variable. And now we can replace these three lines with just one of these apply lift float free functions and give it the float free to use. Again, reload it, and if all has gone well, it will work exactly the same. Now, if you'd like, you can practice by also turning gamma, gain and offset into similar functions, resulting in just four lines of code instead of all this. Well, there you go. Now you have a fully featured lift, gamma, gain and offset digital, and you have lift, gamma, gain and offset functions that you can reuse in other DCTLs. See you next time.